Racing on Saturday takes place out at Turf Teen on the Stanside track the 23rd of March 2024. 18 races on the South African program on Saturday. We've got 9 at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth and 9 at Turf and Teen. So we've got uh, plenty of betting opportunity and um, hopefully we can uh, make some cash on the Saturday. Joining me on the line for the Turf and Teen uh, preview show is Alistair Cohen. And um, Alistair, Alistair, how are you doing? we uh, get towards the end of another week um, as you say we, uh, we've got a lot of action to come on the Saturday with 18 races in total across two cities um, yeah, having a look at both cards this Turfentine card which I've obviously spent some time on for this particular preview I think there'll be quite a lot of punters that are drawn into the card um, I suggest a bit as jackpot number one um, and I've got one banker on the card what worries me a little bit about um, the nine race programs is that does it look a little bit too obvious in some races? Like time for Orchids has been an absolute revelation on the half out, looking for four in a row, yet he's giving a lot of weight away. So anyway, we'll, we'll dissect that in a moment. We're two weeks out from Champions Day, which is going to be an almighty day. It's going to be an absolute ripper. So um, hopefully we can uh, get on to the right path leading up to that and uh, potentially scoop a big pick six at the start of April. Well, race number one, a maiden plate for fillies and mares over 1,000 metres. We'll uh, kick off the day at five past 12. Enchanting Lady, 2 to 1. Gavin Larina aboard from a 3 draw up the lane. It is 22 to 10, about wait for green light. Feather Dance at 7 to 1. Just the two of us, uh, 7 to 1, along with the LA Chance. And then it's 8 to 1. And better ball those. Now, it's a race where what you see is what you get with a lot of these uh, fillies. They're in their place. But uh, Enchanting Lady, could, could it be her day to shine after a third last time out behind Prize Platinum, where she was very close up? Then she's held by number two, wait for green lights on the run to thing called love. There was half a length in it when they met on the 22nd of February. So that's probably going to hand the initiative to number two, wait for green light. But with that said, wait for green light seems to be much better on the inside track than she is running in a straight line. And that might give number one enchanting lady a little bit of hope of turning that form around. And I, I think that there's a little bit of depth to this thousand metre maiden. I mean, when you when you are looking at thousand metre maidens for open company, no matter where in the country, they can be quite shallow. But there are a handful of horses here that look like they're ready to win. Uh, one, two, I'd say five smashing counts for that as well. And number nine, La Chance, another one that um, that could uh, be a, a horse that um, has a little bit of scope to improve. So I think the winner comes from one of those, but I have to go with number two, wait for green light with the four kilos off the back. The yard's been in good form. They're having a wonderful year. Um, she did lose her way for a while, but number two, wait for green light. She's been turned over at prohibitive odds in the past. I'll never forget about Turfentine in England. It was in June when she went up at eight to 10 and she got beaten by Happy Amelia, and that was a bitter pull to swallow. But she, she seems to be on the up with the headgear and with the tongue tie refitted. I think overall she's fairly average number two rates for green light, but I'll be going with her down the straight, but a tentative top selection to open up at Turfentine on the Saturday. Well, that's horse number two at around 22 to 10 in the market. Moving along to race number two, the start off the bypot, 1,400 metres a trip. This is a maiden plate where your favourite is number one, Zenobia's Gold at 8 to 10. Illa de Orange at 3 to 1. The Crown is at 9 to 2, and then it's 8 to 1. And better ball, those you can scratch them before, like a butterfly, field of just seven runners remain. Now, Zenobia's goal ran on nicely last time out, having a second run after layoff. Uh, it's now a peak start, nine run, nine days later, and uh, this does look to be the race that uh, she should get in the bag. She should. Is the race not coming a little bit too soon? That's the only question mark that I have. Um, this is a really shallow race, Raheel. Um, so number one, Zenobia's goal. I think he's got her best chance. It's a well-tried and tested Sean Terry family. He trained the mother. He's trained some of the progeny out of Cranberry Gold. Um, this daughter of William Longsword, I thought, acquitted herself nicely when staying on well behind Super Skit, who won well just over a week ago. Gavin Lorena now takes over the draws in the middle down the straight. There has been a little bit of rain around Joe, but we're not based about 45 k's away from Turfentine. Um, if there was a bit of overnight rain at Turfentine, like there was at Wanky's been saying, then that will certainly hand the advantage to the high number draws down the straight. But Zenobia's goal drawn in the middle. I wouldn't read too much into that. I wouldn't overcomplicate that. On paper, she has the right one. She's 8 to 10. But I wouldn't bank her in the bar, but I'd back her up with number 7, Illa Darage, who's got scope to improve. The run behind Princess Lola was fair. She's got scope to improve. She was five lengths back. Out of that race, though, the form is. It's heavy. It's not pleasant to look at at all. They also run second. Someday maybe he's come out and run second. So 
there's not very inspiring form in and around Ella Derage, unfortunately, and also the market suggested that she wasn't really fancied on debut, but at least she can step forward. I've heard about number eight, the crown. I believe that she will need her first run at the race of the daughter of Rafif, so not much confidence coming out of the circles of number eight, the crown. But then again, how good does she have to be to feature? The answer is not very. But Zenobia's gold is the safest player in race number two. Eight to ten, a bit too skinny for me, so in the dark, I'll back her up the seven. Yeah, number one, Zenobio's Gold, and number seven, Illard Orange. Let's see how they do uh, go in race number two. Race number three, a maiden plate over 1,400 metres. Quarter past one is the off time, the start off the place accumulator. And number one, Master Shop, while well, he was terribly disappointing last time out and uh, frustrating. Going off at five to ten, beaten three and a half lengths, reported a sharp jump. And a jockey questioned on uh, that occasion. Cheek pieces off, Chase Mojan retains a ride. From a three draw, he will uh, obviously likely play a leading role. The form line that he races off are very strong, so he's no doubt got uh, solid credentials. And then we've got Gavin Larina riding policy truth for the very first time for Roy Magna from a one draw. He's at three to one. And then number nine, uh, Marco Frappe returning off a very lengthy layoff. He's at four to one in the market, but um, he's obviously got massive scope for improvement. The question mark will no doubt be fitness. He is undoubtedly the most interesting horse in the race for you. I had a good look at Mastership, and you say the form line's good. The horse who ran second, Field the Up, came out and won, and, and won on his own steam, fair enough. But the horse who ran sixth won a decidedly moderate maiden. That was Van Mile. So those are the two winners out of the form, and I think that this maiden's a good deal stronger than the, the one that Golden Pavilion won at 33 to 1. Um, on the 18th of January. So, first one is a Golding. I'm hoping for the sake of the uh, connections that Mastership kind of grows an extra leg and uh, and does things the right way around, now being Golded. But, again, coming off a break, 15 to 10, a little bit too skinny for me. Not a frappe if he's fit enough. And I don't know, I, I would hate to gauge what type of uh, number we'd like to put next to Marco Frappe. But if he's fit enough, then he's going to take all the beating here. He's run to Pure Predator and Prince of Green. Pure Predator close up in the Great One South African Classic. Prince of Green, you, you know that I, I love Prince of Green. I think the last one was just over the long distance. A well-bred son of the United States. They must have been tearing their hair out that um, they had to spend nearly a year on the sidelines with number nine, Mocha Frappe. And he is the most interesting horse in the race. Can you bank a horse like this in the bar and place accumulator? Absolutely not. But he bears watching, and if there is any interest in the market, then that will solidify uh, the hope for the son of the United States. Others with winning chances, I don't like number two, Policy of Truth. Uh, the form lines he brings into the picture, although two miles west was a horse I liked from the Paul Matchett yard last time out, there's little to get excited about there. Um, Candace's yard is very up and down at the moment. I would ordinarily like number four, Salute the Flag, to run well. He might run well. A lot of the Cape Town horses have come back to Joburg and run well, especially from the Azzy yard. Um, the Ducot yard, not so much. Candace's yard, very up and down. Um, the run to Riverstone strikes as, as winning form. The last run to In the Bag just went to the front, and that was quite crazy, to be honest, and wasn't displaced behind In the Bag. But I I would love to be more confident about number four, Salute the Flag. He either goes very close or he goes missing completely. So, again, a race with a lot of question marks. Even seven Battle of Barberton, not out of it. None, Marco Frappe, add a push, my top choice over number one, Mastership, and leave it open ended for numbers four and seven. The source, uh, Trom Batista, last time out, he found quite a bit of support in the market when returning off a layoff, and um, he was only beaten four lengths. He'll no doubt strip fitter. Could he run, um, could he show big improvement? He's at around 12 to 1 in the market. Can't rule him out, not by any stretch of the imagination. I did not, you, I think uh, I worked with you the last time you ran, you asked the same question that there was money on number five from Batista and I couldn't have him from the draw. But you're right, uh, with a better draw, with uh, fit and match fitness now on his side, he's definitely not out of it. Uh, he's got as, as much a chance as any. It's another race that I'm pretty uneasy about, race number three. Uh, number nine, Mocha Frappe, definitely a uh, horse that we are going to be keeping a very, very close eye on in race number three. But uh, number one, Master Ship, Paps Galdin could just... Uh, have uh, done the trick with the son of Master my feet, and he could get uh, that uh, victory in the bag. Race number four, an MR80 handicap, 1160 meters of distance. Favorite is number one, Dreamland at 18 to 10. San Simon at 33 to 10. Five to one, Turbo Power, who is on a quick backup, so we'll just need to monitor whether he takes his place because he ran on 
when was it? On Thursday, behind jury result. No, on Tuesday, I think it was behind jury result. But he ran uh, this week and he was beaten three lengths. And then we've got the Green Flash at six to one, seven to one, and uh, better ball. Those now, Gavin Larina, he does not ride San Simon, he rides Dreamland. So that would obviously give us indi an indication that um, he feels that Dreamland could be the right one here for Lucky Huda Larkus. And he's got that high number draw, and we know up the lane it could certainly be very, very beneficial. Another one where there's just so many questions, so many, so many reasons to like a horse, and so many reasons not to like a horse. The first thing I want to address is number four Turbo Power. I think if he runs, he wins. Uh, all depends how he pulls up. Uh, knowing Sean Terry like I do, he'll make the call at the very, very last second whether he's going to run number four Turbo Power or not. The reason why I like him is that nothing on the outside of the Valo and Cruz. They got a blow in. He got closest on the entire day. I fell into that trap with uh, Open Highway from a race meeting earlier into uh, into Tuesday, but uh, the point is Turbo Power, if he was on the right side of the track and if he had horses to follow, he probably would have won on Tuesday. Anyway, there's no guarantee he runs. If he does run, I like him. But then what is Gavin? Gavin Arena can choose whatever lines were in his horse he likes. He could have chosen Dreamland, San Simon, or Green Flash in this race, and he's gone with Dreamland. I think he's gone with Dreamland because he's now in a handicap again. He's been coming to laugh. His ratings come down from a 191 to an 86, although that's marginal. The point is it has been on the decline. And if you like time for Orchid to race later, which many people will like, then Dreamland's got to come into the picture. But what's San Simon done wrong that Gavin's jumped off San Simon? And why is Green Flash suddenly um, without hope? Because I think she needed her last run. Um, I know that wasn't after a long layoff, but it was a bit stop start, I know, in between run one to run two, but I'm under seven green flash. So I'm not convinced that she's got her legs tied up either. Max Liotta can feature as well. So what I'm getting at is if Turbo Power runs, I'll banker him in the pick six. And if he doesn't, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do. I'll probably trust Gavin Lorena's judgments and tip number one Dreamland on top. But am I comfortable doing that? No. What, what do you think he made his judgment of? Do you think it was it was work in the lead up to this race of the last week? Do you think it was on pure form that we can see? Because he, he obviously wrote time for Orchid last time out who was, who was a good winner. Do you think he's just gone on that run and, and thought that this that form line could be superior to the runners that uh, he meets here? Riding work at the Vol is once in a blue moon, unless he's uh, pitched up there for the first time in a long time early in the morning. He might have worked Dreamland after a race meeting. That could be the uh, that could be the office. But then again, declarations. The last meeting out of the Vol was done on Tuesday. Declarations would have been done before. They would have galloped after a race meeting. I don't know. I can't see it being that. Gavin must have seen something in the form that that inspires him a little bit more than I do. Not that I'm not inspired. I'm not for one moment ruling out Dreamland. I think the, maybe it's the outside draw. Maybe it's still 10 out of 10. Or now 9 out of 9 that's swayed Gavin to number 1 Dreamland. Maybe that's the reason. Um, but please believe me, I, I don't think it would have been an easy decision and there would have been a bit of pressure coming from your hand about number 2 San Simon. Believe me, that would have been an awkward conversation. Well, Joker Man won uh, yesterday. He's for, on, on Thursday, he's for uh, Frank that form. So... Uh Dreamland could perhaps be the right horse in race number four. Moving along to race number five, a Phillies and Mayors 96 handicap over 1,000 meters. And uh, your favorite is Time for Orchids, even money favorite here. Woman of Power, 6 to 1, along with Virgin River, Wings Within Me at 10 to 1. It's in 12 to 1. And better of all those now. Time for Orchids, no doubt the best horse uh, in the race here. She's a four time winner from 14 starts. She's uh, gone up four points for winning her last start when she beat Dreamland and we'll see how that form line goes in the previous race. She's got to give weight away as you mentioned earlier. She's a filly that's on the up, she's improving and uh, she could well be uh, up to the task at hand. And you've got this horse, Woman of Power, who just ran seven days ago, beaten behind Cosmic Star in receipt of five kgs. And, and surely Gavin would, would look at it and, and say, I think that Time for Orchids is better than Cosmic Star. And if Cosmic Star could give this filly 5 kgs, I don't see why Time for Orchids can't give her, what's it, close to, close to 9 kgs in this race here. I think that she could do it, do it. And would you believe that, or would you make Time for Orchids a banker in all bets? She's the one to beat. Maybe I've been too clever here, Rio, but I think your analogy and I think the way that you've read it is probably exactly the way that Gavin's read it as well. Um, but 
And although Tom for Orchids, I don't think she's felt the stick since getting back to Joburg. Her three wins have been seriously commanding. She won last time easy in the margin suggested. Um, she was never in doubt. She's got a high number draw down the Turfentine stand side straight. All that's good. I thought I'd be getting a better price about eight women of power and ten Virgin River as my backup. Um, but She's got to give a lot of weight away. She is the most proven horse in the race. There's only a handful of four-year-olds here. Rockets Red Glare being another one, but she's totally lost her way. And the other one, number 10, Virgin River, who she's got to give... Whoa, what's that? That's uh, that's a lot of weight. That's 14 kilos to that she's got to give number 10, Virgin River. I think that brings Alec Lurd's runner into the picture. I'm a fan of this daughter of Verse and Gertrix. I think she's underachieved a little bit. She beat Midwinter Wind, who hasn't looked back since uh, tasting defeat to Virgin River. Nervin Nestili, uh, all he's got to do is keep her in a straight line and, and time her up. So I'm sure that uh, that he'll be strapped on and given good instructions on this daughter of Verse and Gertrix. I wouldn't take the rest as too much of a concern. I think she runs well first. She might be the type of filly that, that just needs a bit of a fish enough to be at her best before she kind of loses her way, which it looked like she was doing. So I'm making a good case for number 10, Virgin River, to give number one time for Orchid something to worry about. We've got the unexposed against the well-proven. And then number eight, Woman of Power. I think that she's worth another chance, second and after a race for a sprinter. Cabello Matsunyani back on. I like how she finished off her race a week ago behind Cosmic Star. Is that good enough to receive as much weight from time for orchids if you compare apples with oranges? Probably not. But I also think there's something about number eight, Woman of Power, that's that's going to make her a bit of a chance. So I must be honest, for, for purely selfish reasons, I'm looking to beat the even money favourite in the jackpot. But am I being stupid? Probably I am. Um, but I'll be shouting at eight and ten. But I've got number one, time for orchids in because you'd be crazy to leave her out. 1, 8 and 10 in race number 5, the start of jackpot 1, which is uh, Alistair's suggested bet. Race number 6, an MR80 handicap over 2,000 metres. 3 o'clock is the off time and, uh, well, Marauding Horde is back in action and what a win. Last time out beating George Handel in the, in the Derby trial 14 days ago. 2,000 metres once again. This uh, is a race where he's, uh, he's obviously, uh, he meets competitive runners here, but... Um, I think he, he could be too good for them, as the market does suggest. I think he'll be too good for them. He holds an entry for the South African Derby in two weeks' time, and he's drawn two. And knowing Mark as I do, and I, I must be honest, I play golf with him on wins, and I, I tried to get an answer out of him. And, uh, and he was, um, I think, trying to protect this horse's rating by running him back off an 89. And I think deep down, with, uh, dare I say, a bit of a lack, of depth in the South African Derby this year, you'd probably expect Marauding Horde to go fairly close, and then that would be it. I don't know what is not. There's a long-term plan. Okay, let's let's establish this. There's a long-term plan with Marauding Horde, and I'm not too sure a what it is, and b I think Mark is playing the long game with the Son of Verse and Gertrix rather than being tempted. Not that the Derby's off the table, but I can't see him running this horse three times in the space of a month, culminating in a 2,400 meter Grade One. Um, so I think that maybe this is wise. I mean, it, it's, it's probably with these owners that have all been in the game for a long time, it's an easy explanation. But for a new owner, imagine saying, no, I'm not going to go for the grade one where I think you've got a good chance. I'm going to go for a handicap two weeks before. So, I, like I said, the end game, I don't know what it is. But now he's become a very interesting horse in my life as number three marauding horse. I remember before his debut, expectations were zero. Then in the second set, he got beaten by Blackberry Breeze at one to three, where, again, my expectations were... He might be an average racehorse. And then he won a maiden by the narrowest of margins, beating Judgment Day. And again, little to get excited about. But his win in the Derby trial was absolutely brilliant. He blew them away. And the, I, I sent Lawrence Vern as a message saying he'll be very interesting in the Summer Cup. I don't think he's a Hollywood Bets grave or so I can't see him being a factor in the Daily News 2000 or the Hollywood Bets Derby trial. And the fact that I'm even talking about that with a horse race at 89, with horses like Dream with Envy, um, Purple Pitcher, Sandring on Summit, all in existence. That's absolutely crazy. But the point is there's a long game with number three Marauding Horde. And I think if there is going to be a long game, and I think if he is going to 
extend on his capabilities and show that he is got something about him and got feature races in him, which he convinced me that he does last time with blinkers on for the first time, then he should win. He's a banker for me in all bits and he's the best person on the card. And thankfully he's on this card because as uh, many viewers would have known, the first five races, I've had a tough time separating them and the next few is not much easier. All in with Maroli Nord in race number six, the start of uh, Jackpot 2. Race number seven, this uh, is going to be run over 2,000 meters as well. It's an MR97 handicap. 15.35 is the off time. And uh, Twa Twa Cat is your favorite at 22 to 10. 4 to 1 Viva Brazil. Poor little, poor little Rich Girl at 5 to 1. 7 to 1 Raffles, home of the brave. 8 to 1 and better ball those. Well, the Hollywood pair, poor little Rich Girl and uh, Twa Twa Cat meet up once again after their rivalry last time out. And Twa Twa Cat. I'm not sure whether it was a combination of poor little rich girl not wanting to get beat or Twa Twa Cut not wanting to win because he moved up. He moved up like a winner. I think he actually went past uh, that filly and he just didn't seem to want to finish off his race and, and get his uh, head over the line and he was eventually beaten. He went down by a quarter of a length and what's your thoughts on the seventh? Do you think uh, he'll turn the form around? Do you think that she'll confirm the form? Is it a two-horse race, or how are you playing the seventh race? No, I've gone in with half the fair. I've got five horses right here. I think to answer your question, I think it might have been the pace of the race that just counted against Twa Twa Cut. And I think if they go slowly again, that could be his Achilles heel. I mean, he sat right up the backside of Pearl Little Rich Girl, but the way they started was the way they finished. And credit to Atandir and Goodwood because he measured that to perfection. Cabela Matsunyani, stable jockey, is back on board. Pearl Little Rich Girl, she only got a two-pound penalty, which might be very kind indeed. Um, and she's taking on boys again. I wouldn't worry about her taking on boys because she's beaten them already just two weeks earlier so there's a lot to like about poor little rich girl to answer your question will twa twa cut reverse the form the draw is going to be awkward he's going to need a little bit of luck in running i think that pound for pound twa twa cut might be a slightly better horse than poor little rich girl especially over anything further than 2000 meters but um on this particular day, I'm going to give Pearl Little Rich with a vote of confidence between the Hollywood pair. And other horses that I've got in, number two, Raffles, not one to totally discount. Four, Home of the Brave. Here's a very interesting horse. In fact, I make him my top choice, Home of the Brave. Um, he's run with some good company. Last time was over the wrong distance. Over this trip, he's... 100% win place record, 50% win record over this trip. And you can tell that Tyrone Zaki's kind of got him towards the level and, and kind of programmed him to, for a race, and this must have been it. I think number four, Home of the Brave, is, uh, is the one they all need to beat you, and he represents some value at 7-1. to one. And the other one I've got in is number nine, Viva Brazil, just because he's so consistent and he's difficult to leave out, and he's beaten Twa Twa Cut before, although at the weights, Twa Twa Cut should turn that form around. But Blinkers also go on to Viva Brazil for the first time, so who knows whether that will have a good effect or not. So... All in all, five horses for me in the jackpot, which is my suggested bet. Top choice is number four, Home of the Brave, but uh, I've got a few in his backup. Home of the Brave, 7-1, to one, could certainly represent some good value in race number seven. Race number eight, a penultimate race on the day. Phillies and Mayor, 77, handicap, uh, 1,600 metres, the trip. Favourite is uh, number three, Happy Mo. At three to one, it's thirty-three to ten. Number five, Kissing Machine, October Fair, four to one, along with Mighty Goddess. It's six to one about Sound Machine, and then it's twelve to one, and better ball those. Now, Happy Mo absolutely romped home to victory last time out, beating uh, Play with Fire, and we've seen that form line Frank. Uh, from one draw, she's uh, going to need to up her game if she's to um, obviously win straight out the maidens because. Uh, You've got uh, other horses that uh, are knocking on the door. Sound Machine won well. Kissing Machine won well. They are two recent maiden winners that um, could certainly be up to the task at hand. And then you've got number one, October Fair, who's, who's getting closer to that uh, third career victory. So it does look to be a competitive eighth race. Very, very open eight race indeed. The final leg of the jackpot this week. I like Happy Mo. I have to go in with Happy Mo. I like how she won last time. What she beat, I don't know. The two direct winners out of that former play with Fire, uh, who went down to Hollywood Best Grove and won, needed a bit of riding to win, but she won. And then the fifth horse Springer came out and won a very weak maiden on uh, Tuesday at the Vile. But the point is, I like what I saw from, from Happy Mo. Second and after race, she seems like a horse in a good space and, and on the up and going in the right direction. Although you spot on, she will need to raise her game. But draw one's going to be a huge advantage. She is the favourite. It 
wouldn't be my style to go with a horse that this fresh up the maidens taking on horses that have quite exposed form and you know where you're going and they've got good numbers behind their name but I think Happy Mo at least is going in the right direction but again lots of horses here number one October Fair um, there's a line of form with October Fair Mighty Goddess and Courageous they should be right on top of each other with regards to Courageous her last run her bloods uh, were on the dicey side I don't actually know how they are for, for this meeting that's got to be a bit of a question mark but with that said I think that all things being equal she should go a little bit closer to Mighty Goddess turn the form around I don't know, but go closer. Um, she's the wrong price of 12 to 1 because everyone liked her last time and for running fourth. Um, now all of a sudden everyone's gone off her. And uh, the rest of I've got a number five, Kissing Machine as well. Also in the same boat as number one, or rather number three, Happy Mo is Kissing Machine, a good winner over Play With Fire, but indirectly, Happy Mo be Play With Fire by five and Kissing Machine be Play With Fire by three and three quarters. Um... Yeah, they're both going in the same direction, or, or Happy Mo and Kissing Machine. They're both progressive three-year-olds. I think the expectations for Kissing Machine are a little bit higher than what they are for Happy Mo, funny enough. I think Kissing Machine is targeting something in the not-so-distant future, possibly in KZN, whereas Happy Mo, I think they're going to keep it standard, keep it quiet, and, and keep the fires burning back home. So again, lots of horses in with chances. Another race that I'm quite uneasy about, and I've gone with more than half the field. Could Kissing could kiss Machine not perhaps be the, the better of the three-year-olds, given that she's run behind Sukumvit and Francis Ethel, two three-year-old fillies that look to be well above average and, and better than these runners here? So yes, you're all right. If Sukumvit and Francis Ethel were in this race, they would be red-hot favourites and they'd probably be bankers in all plays. But then again, when you look at Play With Fire, well, why is Happy Mo suddenly going to go cold and Kissing Machine going to be the right one using indirect form lines? Yeah. Um, you can make the same case for both of them. They, they're both pretty much aligned in the market. they both got the same profiles. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see who comes out on top. There's only half a kilo in it. There's one draw in it. An intriguing race between these two progressive three-year-olds and, and also a few others as well. Yeah, it seems very, very interesting and, and a race where I think that we can keep an eye on these uh, these uh, few three-year-olds that line up here. And uh, they could uh, they could certainly have uh, bright futures if they manage to uh, get the job done in race eight. Race number nine of Phillies and Mayors, 92 divided handicap, 1600 meters, the trip 1650 is the off time. Favorite is Mary's Greenlight at two to one. Donna Mo at four to one. Mizzen Sale eleven to two. Six to one about LMB. It's an eight to one and better ball those. Now uh, Mary's Greenlight. Uh, she ran in the Oaks Trail last time out behind Francis Ethel. She was um, only beaten one and a half length. She's got a deep draw to contend with dropping in trip, but she does go over the distance that uh, she is suited to. And then you've got horses like Donna Mo who. Has taken a bit of time to, to win her maiden, but she won her maiden. And then last time out, I thought she won a good race. But the question is, is that field stronger than what she does meet you? I, I doubt that. This does look to be a lot stronger. And then Mizzen Sale, she looked to be a horse that was battling in the maidens. And all of a sudden, she's turned the corner. She, she put Francis Ethel to sleep. And then a length behind My Lady Soul beating San Simon. So she all of a sudden looks to be heading in the right direction. 100%. I made up my mind when I looked at Dick's first time around that Mary's Green Light would be a very, very hard horse to beat. Um, I don't think she got home over 2,000 metres last time in the Auburn Forest Oaks trial. She moved up dangerously enough and she had enough with about 100 metres left to go. The fact that she was only beaten a length and a half is testament to number one Mary's Green Light. She's been tried at graded level. She's probably not a graded level silly, not yet anyway. Um, and I think that coming to these calmer waters, it's the right type of race and it's the right type of shape of race as well for number one Mary's Green Light. But the draw is a concern. And I think if there is an Achilles heel to her, it is the draw. Although I suspect Muzi Yeni is going to ride her positively. And if she does get up there softly and just having a look, Magical Flight can be forward, Escape Artists can get forward. I don't think it'll be all that easy for her. But if things do go according to plan, she'll have a target on her back and she could well shrug them all off, number one, Mary's Green Light. But down the page, number nine, Miz and Sale, credit to you, Hunt and Fun Fury, and you spot on. She looked bang average for a lot of her maiden career. She has got a mind of her own, but Diego de Gavea gets on best with his daughter of erupt um, he's back on board and, and since getting out the Mercedes her confidence is up her racing's up to an 87 which would have been unthinkable when she was a 69 in the low 70s as a maiden but uh, here we are giving her a vote of confidence in a wide open race and I think the Terry pair or the Terry horses are not totally out of it either with preference for number 7 LMB Peter Sunday probably takes her out again the draw's not ideal but she's been running nicely enough to suggest that her win's just around the corner 
Confidence here with number one, Mary's green light. Alistair all in with this three-year-old daughter of uh, giving the green light and uh, she's down in class. Let's see if she can uh, bounce back to winning ways. We're going to move along to the suggested bet and Alistair will take us through his suggested bet, which is jackpot one. And that begins with the running of race number five. So Alistair, take it away. Gets underway on the uh, double head on Saturday. You can expect the numbers to be quite good as we get towards the end of the month. First league, one, eight, and ten to town for Orchids, Women of Power, and Virgin River. Second league, banker number three, Marauding Horde. I know she's, I know he's four to ten, but I think you'll take all the beating. Then opens up races seven and eight. So I've gone two raffles, four home of the brave, five trois trois cut, seven, or rather eight for a little rich girl, and nine Viva Brazil. And the final league, one October fair, three happy no, five kissing machine, six mighty goddess, and seven courageous. That is Alistair Cohen's jackpot one. Alistair, thanks very much for your time. Have a wonderful weekend. All the best with racing on Saturday. Thanks for here. Yep, always a pleasure. Same to you. Enjoy the weekend ahead. Um, obviously, good racing on Sunday at Hollywood Bets. Grave, all long overdue to see some good feature races and some visitors coming to town as well. So, um, yep, all rooms facing the sea going into the weekend. Should be a good one. Thanks very much to Alistair. And all the best with racing on Saturday out at Turf Team and out at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth. Hopefully, uh, the 18 races on uh, Saturday here in South Africa managed to uh, treat you well and you find plenty winners.